Welcome to the complete beginner's guide for new air fryer owners. You've got your new air fryer and you are probably feeling a little bit intimidated by it. Don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna help you get your air fryer out of the box and start using it. In this free masterclass, you are not only gonna learn exactly what to do with your brand new air fryer, you'll also learn the most common mistakes people make when using their air fryer, plus I'll uncover the truth about oil and air fryers. And then you're gonna learn how to convert your favorite recipes so you can make them in the air fryer. That is gonna save you so much time. Then you'll learn exactly which air fryer accessories are useful and helpful and will help expand the possibilities with your air fryer cooking. And lastly, you'll learn how to easily maintain the cleanliness of your air fryer, what to do if your air fryer is smelly, and how to deep clean your air fryer. All of that in the most comprehensive free user guide that will apply to almost any air fryer. So grab yourself a drink, pull out your air fryer, and let's go. Welcome, my name is Kathy from fabulouslyfrugal.com and yummyairfryerrecipes.com. And on this channel, I show people how to actually use their air fryer with tutorials like this one, plus I show people what to make in the air fryer and how to do it. I also have an air fryer recipe cookbook. You can find that at yummyairfryerrecipes.com. Now let's dive into how to use your air fryer for the very first time. So what to expect the very first time you use your air fryer? Well, of course, take it out of the box. You'll want to spend a little time reading through the instruction manuals. I know it's not always fun to do, but each model does vary just a little bit and we'll have some different things about it. So before you use it for the very first time, wash out that air fryer with some nice hot soapy water and a soft dishcloth or a sponge, then give that a quick dry. Now, I don't necessarily stress out about getting every nook and can't cranny dry because the air fryer can also dry itself because it's got that powerful heating element in there. So I am just gonna double check that there's no other packaging inside anywhere so I don't start anything on fire. So now it's time for the test run. That's where you're gonna just run your air fryer empty. Not only will it just make sure everything's working properly, it's gonna cook off those factory oils and kind of get rid of that yucky smell that comes with new appliances, right? I'm gonna run this at 400 for five minutes. That's the directions for the Kasori brand. But even after that process, some still experience that lingering plasticky factory smell. If this is you, here's a hack that one of my wonderful viewers shared with me a while ago. Simply get an oven safe bowl and pour about half to a cup of white vinegar in it. Then add about a tablespoon or two of lemon juice, place it in the air fryer basket and run it for five to 10 minutes at 400 degrees. You might have to do this a few times before the smell goes away. If the smell is too bothersome, you can set it outside in a safe spot and run it out there for a while. And if you've run it several times and it still isn't going away, I suggest you contact the manufacturer. Now you can hear the air fryer. That's one thing that does vary. I would say my Philips air fryer is louder than this Kasori brand. It's louder than a microwave, but definitely not as loud as a vacuum. Okay, there we go. It's done with the test run and it's hot. So all of this is hot. Up here is not hot. It's a little bit warm right here on the sides. It does say to not touch anything else except the basket. If you've been running for quite a while, all of this could be pretty hot. It's clean, we did the test run. Now it's time to get cooking. We're gonna keep it really simple. I got a huge bag of french fries my husband bought. We're not gonna cook all of these though. Let's talk about the great debate, to preheat or not. Preheating the air fryer can be done in five minutes or less, and the whole purpose is to get that heating element nice and hot, and that way your food gets a blast of hot air right from the get-go. Do I always preheat? Not necessarily. If I'm making foods that I would normally grill, I for sure preheat. But sometimes I just forget about it or I'm rushed. And even though preheating is recommended in the instruction manual, I'm gonna say that I haven't noticed a huge difference if I don't preheat first. Test it out on your air fryer. Let me know if you think preheating really matters or not. I mean, really, it doesn't take that much time, so you can just preheat while you prep your foods. And preheating the air fryer versus the oven, 
It's so much faster. I'm gonna dump some of these fries into the basket, obviously not the entire bag. You'll just wanna make sure you don't overfill your air fryer basket. Keep it to about half full or less. And depending on what you're gonna make, you're gonna need some oil. Now, it's not gallons of oil, it's not even cups of oil. I take a deep dive into oil in the next segment, so keep watching for that. But since these fries already have oil added in them, I don't need to add any whatsoever. Now, if I'm making my homemade fries, you better bet I do add a little oil. I will link to that recipe down in the notes below. Go ahead and close it up and find the power button. Some air fryers have preset cooking buttons like my Kasori does. And note that on this picture of fries, it's actually for fresh french fries, not for frozen. So I'm gonna just bump the heat down a little bit. And the instructions on the bag say to cook these at 425 for 26 to 28 minutes. We do not need to do it that long in the air fryer. I'm gonna leave it at this 380 temperature and then I'm just gonna drop the time down to 12 minutes. And you can see here, it's gonna remind me to shake the fries at the halfway point. Later on in this training, you're gonna learn more about how to cook food in your air fryer, especially when you don't have air fryer cooking instructions. The great thing about the air fryer is you can easily peek in and check on the foods. You could increase the temperature if you feel like you need to. You can add more time and you're not gonna lose a ton of heat when you open up that drawer. And here's my reminder and I love the safety feature on the Kasori. I can just pull it open and it's gonna automatically stop. My Philips air fryer does not have this feature. I'm gonna give these fries a little shake here so they can cook nice and evenly. And then check it out when I close this back up. It automatically starts right back up again. I love this feature. And now it is done. These are nice and crispy and hot. And it's only been 12 minutes instead of like 28. If you wanted these even more crispy, I would pop them in for about two or three more minutes and crank the heat up to 400. So not only did I save time cooking these fries up in the air fryer, they taste a lot better than oven baked. And my kitchen isn't hot because I didn't have to preheat my oven forever and then run it for another 28 minutes. That's just one reason why I love the air fryer. Great job getting it out of the box. Now you're ready to put it to work. But before you get going, it's important that you know these top 12 air fryer mistakes. Mistake number one, not investing in a good air fryer. It's tempting to buy a cheap air fryer to save some extra dollars. But in the long run, it's a waste of money if you're not gonna buy a good one. Not only will you get subpar results from your food, a common complaint from cheap air fryers is that the nonstick coating starts peeling off within a few months, and then you're just gonna have to replace it anyway. If you haven't purchased your air fryer yet, or if you haven't used it, consider returning it and doing some research. Be sure to take some time to read through the reviews and make sure you're buying an air fryer with excellent quality. I recommend looking for products that have a few thousand reviews and an average star rating of a four to 4.5 stars. I personally use the Kasori air fryer and the Philips XXL air fryer in my kitchen. And between the two, I actually prefer the Kasori. It's cheaper, it's lighter weight, and I feel like it cooks the food just as well as the more expensive Philips. Mistake number two, overcrowding the basket. One of the most important rules of air frying is not to overcrowd the basket. You'll see in the marketing pictures that they've got the baskets overflowing with food and that's just not right. Instead, fill your basket no more than halfway full. The only exception that I found with this rule is frozen air fryer wings. I generally do load up the basket because they shrink and lose a lot of water as they're cooking. I've got a video down below I will link to that teaches you more about that. Now, if you don't wanna cook your food in batches to avoid overcrowding, consider getting a larger air fryer. In fact, I advise that you get an air fryer that's a little bit larger than you think you actually need. I don't think you'll regret that purchase. And instead of looking at the capacity size, I recommend looking at the dimensions of the basket and most importantly, paying attention to that horizontal space where you can lay food flat. My 5.8 Kasori basket is a nine by nine basket and it's a great size for me and it doesn't take up a ton of counter space. Also, keep in mind when you're looking for an air fryer, the square pan is gonna be able to fit more inside of it than a circular pan. Mistake number three, you're doing the oil all wrong. Even though an air fryer is marketed as a healthier way to fry foods, most of the foods you cook will need a little oil if you're looking for that truly crispy finish. I'm gonna help you know when you need oil, how much oil to use, and what the best type of oil to use is. Some people go crazy and use way too much oil and others aren't using enough or they're not using any at all when they really should be. Oil not only helps transfer the heat, it's gonna help make the food crispier. As a general rule of thumb, you only need one to two teaspoons of oil for breaded foods if you want a crispy finish. Just 
a light coating will do, and you can always add more oil at the end of the cooking cycle if you want more crispiness on your food. Oil also works great for foods like these roasted potatoes, and rather than a spray, you can just stir the food up in a mixture of oil and seasonings. Which leads me to another reason you might want some oil. It helps the spices and seasonings adhere to the food, like in these air fryer chicken thighs or this air fryer pork. If your food is already fatty like bacon or hamburger patties or chicken wings, you don't even need oil. And of course, if you're using your air fryer for baking, like cookies and these cakes, you don't need any oil at all. You also wanna make sure you're using the right kind of oil. First of all, it's best to avoid pressurized and canned sprayers. It's because they contain propellants and chemicals, which have been shown to cause problems with the coating inside the air fryer basket. Plus, they're chemicals that you don't want in your food anyway. So instead, purchase a good oil sprayer and put your favorite oil in it. I have a link for what I like to use down in the notes below. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that, just pour a little oil on a paper towel and you can wipe down the inside of your basket for cooking foods like chicken or donuts and things like that. And last note about the oil. You need to know about smoke points. When you cook food in your air fryer, you're gonna wanna use an oil that has a higher smoke point. I have more details about that down in the notes below. I personally like to use avocado oil. It has a higher smoke point and it's healthier than vegetable oil and canola oil. Mistake number four, not rotating or shaking your food halfway through cooking. Air fryers are almost completely hands off, but not 100%. For a perfectly cooked meal, you're gonna want to take time to flip or rotate the food or shake it when it's halfway through cooking. Some air fryers have a reminder for you, others don't. So if you find yourself always forgetting to rotate the food, what I suggest is just setting the timer for the first half, letting that go off, rotating the food, and then setting the timer for the second half of the cooking time. Mistake number five, not checking the food's temperature. If you wanna get the best results from the meat that you cook cook in your air fryer, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a small instant read digital meat thermometer. They're cheap, under $20, and so helpful to make sure you don't undercook or overcook your food. I go into more detail about this in my video all about cooking chicken in the air fryer, so be sure to check the notes below for that one. Mistake number six, not giving your air fryer air. What the heck am I talking about? Air fryers need air to cook. To make sure your air fryer is getting enough circulation, ensure you've got at least five inches of space between your air fryer and the wall. That's gonna allow it to have enough circulation and also protect your walls. You also wanna make sure that there's some space underneath your air fryer. This is gonna help with the air circulation and also protect the countertops when you have it on a wood cutting board or something else that's a heat resistant surface. I have another cutting board that I use to set the hot basket on when I'm pulling it out and rearranging food or serving the food. Mistake number seven, cooking fatty foods incorrectly. Like I mentioned earlier, you don't need oil for fatty foods. Since the fat is gonna be cooking off the food and landing in the dirt basket, you'll have better results if you put a little water down there. That way when that fatty oil lands down there, it's gonna hit the water instead of metal and it's gonna prevent all the yucky smoking that sometimes people experience in their air fryers. Mistake number eight cooking in the air fryer without cleaning it first. Thinking about cleaning the air fryer in between the cooking sessions can sound like a pain in the neck, right? But it's actually super easy. The longer you leave your food in the air fryer, the harder it's gonna be to clean it off. The crumbs that are left behind in the basket are gonna burn to a crisp the next time you use your air fryer and be even harder to clean. Plus it could be changing the taste of your food and will likely lead to a lot of smoke and funky smells. So just take a few minutes, put it in your sink, fill it up with some hot soapy water and let it soak. It doesn't take long because most air fryers have that nonstick coating. Some air fryer baskets are dishwasher safe, but they take so much room in the dishwasher and I wanna be a little extra careful with it to protect that coating. So just washing it off in the sink is so quick and easy. Then I set it out to air dry. So just always plan on cleaning the basket right after you use it. If you got grease in the bottom of the basket, you can pour it out immediately if you have a safe place to dispose of it or let it harden up a little bit and I just like to use paper towels to wipe that out. Then I soak the pan in the hot soapy water. And occasionally you're gonna wanna do a deeper clean in your air fryer. You'll learn more about that in the last segment of this video. Mistake number nine, cooking wet food. 
First of all, you cannot air fry foods that have a wet batter. But more importantly, any unbreaded food that you want to get crispy and browned, you need to pat it dry first. So this applies to all of your proteins and your veggies. It'll get you a nice crispy finish without drying out the food or steaming it. Mistake number 10, not adapting recipes. Air frying food is not a perfect one-to-one -one conversion from baking instructions to air fryer instructions. Since the air fryer is so compact, it cooks foods faster. So you will need to adjust the time and temperature when you cook foods. I will deep dive into that in the next segment of this video. Mistake number 11, not using your air fryer to reheat leftovers. Yo, say goodbye to soggy leftovers. Reheating leftovers in the air fryer is the best way to bring food back to life. Yes, it does take a little bit longer than the microwave, but it's faster than reheating in the oven and so worth it. I love reheating leftovers from a restaurant or french fries or leftover pizza. So I usually just throw leftovers in the air fryer at 350 for three to five minutes. Sometimes that's perfect. Other times I just add a couple more minutes. Easy peasy. Mistake number 12, not using helpful tools. Now you don't need to go out and buy more accessories for your air fryer. You can if you want, but there's other things you can use. You will learn all my tips for air fryer accessories in just a few minutes. So keep watching. Do note that you should never, ever, ever put wax paper or paper towels in your air fryer. They could melt or blow up into the heating element and start a fire. So let's not do that. Are you feeling a little more confident? Now it's time to deep dive into how to adapt any recipe to work in your air fryer. The easiest thing to remember is if you can grill it, if you can fry it, if you can bake it, you can most likely cook it up in your air fryer. But why would you want to cook anything but fries in your air fryer? Because it's a small, compact convection oven, foods cook faster, there's little to no preheat time, as you've already learned. And what I love is that when the food is done cooking, the unit shuts off, so you don't have to rush to the kitchen to pull things out before they burn. Plus, it keeps your house a lot cooler, especially in the summertime, and it's a lot of fun to use. However, like I mentioned earlier, it's not a simple one-to-one -one conversion, so let's get into it. First, five tips for success as you adapt recipes for your air fryer. Number one, your instant read thermometer is going to be your best friend. If you don't have one of these yet, it's time to add them to your kitchen arsenal. I've got a link down in the video description below that will take you right to these on Amazon. You can usually find them for less than $20. Number two, I have a free download that lists out all of the internal temperatures that foods should be cooked to. That's including meats and baked goods. Check the video description box for a link to that as well. Using this, Coupled with this means your food will turn out perfectly every single time. Number three, shake and rotate your food for even crisping and cooking. Unless you're cooking baked goods in your air fryer, then don't worry about this step. Number four, as you use your air fryer, take notes. Get a notepad or a piece of paper and hang it in your pantry or inside of a cupboard and jot down the foods you're cooking and the times and temperatures that turned out successful. That way, when you go to cook up your regular favorite foods, you'll easily remember how how you cooked them the last time. That's a nice time saving tip. Number five, keep using your air fryer. Once you get past that learning curve, you'll just have this gut feeling and you'll just know what time and temperature to cook your food. Think how easy it is to use your microwave. Before you know it, your air fryer will be that easy too. And if you just prefer to have someone tell you what to do, I have a whole bunch of air fryer recipes here on my channel and you can snag my air fryer recipe book. You'll learn more about that at yummy airfryerrecipes.com. Now let's dig in. I'm going to cover adapting foods that you would normally grill, deep fry, or cook in your oven. Let's go. When you're adapting grill recipes for your air fryer, always preheat your air fryer at the highest temperature for at least five minutes. That way you'll get a little bit of a sear on your food. Because when you grill and you're cooking on flames, the air fryer will take about the same amount of time. When you grill at high heat, you're probably looking at temperatures around 450, but if it's an open flame, the temperature can fluctuate. In the air fryer, that temperature stays nice and stable, and I usually cook between the 370 and 400 degree range. And just like when you're grilling, that instant rate thermometer is gonna be key to success. 
Adapting deep frying recipes, that one's a little bit different. Because hot oil conducts heat faster, you'll actually have to air fry food longer than if you were deep frying it. For example, frozen fries take just a few minutes in the deep fryer, where the air fryer is gonna take more like 15 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. But in the oven, they take even longer and they taste worse. Deep fried Oreos take two minutes in the deep fryer, but four to five minutes in the air fryer. In the case of air fryer versus deep fryer, you won't save time, but cleanup is easy. Easier, your house won't stink like greasy oil and of course the health benefits of using way less oil it's a no-brainer now adapting oven recipes for your air fryer if you're expecting an easy rule or equation that you can simply apply to all recipes I'm sorry to say it doesn't exist however I do have a general rule of thumb but there are some exceptions to the rule. So make sure you watch till the end. And again, if you just don't like figuring things out and like to have someone that just tells you what to do, I'm your gal. Go to yummyairfryerrecipes.com and check out my air fryer cookbook. Yay! Here's the rule. I've got two different ways to think about this. First, thank you to my viewer, Jeremy, for sharing the 10-20 rule. This is how it works. You deduct 10% of the temperature and 20% of the time. So if you have a recipe that calls for 350 degrees, for 15 minutes, you would take 10% off the 350, which is 35. So 350 minus 35 equals 315. And then 15 minutes cook time minus 20% would be taking off 150 plus 150 equals 3. 3 minus 15. 15 minus 3 is 12. So 12 minutes. Final equation comes to 315 degrees for 12 minutes. Now, that's a lot of math, and maybe you don't jive with that. So here's what I do that's quick and simple. I start by dropping the temperature anywhere from 10 to 25 degrees, and then I cut the cooking time in half, and then I build from there. With a simple check on the food, I can easily add more time and increase the temperature as needed. That's what I love about the air fryer. Popping the drawer open and peeking at the food, taking the temperature is so easy, just takes a second. It's not hard for the unit to come back to temperature and continue cooking, unlike your oven. Now here are the exceptions. Frozen food, for example. Things like frozen veggies or french fries, any of those little prepared foods that's it's a whole bunch of little things. This rule applies very nicely. But if you have a frozen food that's larger and more solid, say like a pizza or chicken pot pie like this one, the rule will be different. And that's because the air fryer is so small and compact. What will happen is the exterior is going to cook up before the interior does. So go even lower on that temperature, that way the tops and the sides won't burn. This exception also applies to baked goods like cake, brownies, and even cookies. You'll cook them for less time, but at a much lower temperature. Because these baked goods are so dense, it just takes more time to cook them through the middle. By the time it's been cooked through, the tops could totally be burnt. So in these cases, I always cover the pans with foil, or you could use a silicone lid, and that's going to help block the heat from the top of the food then you can take the cover off near the end of cook time and let things brown just perfectly. And don't forget, you can also use your instant read thermometer to check on the internal temperature of those baked goods. I have those temperatures on my free download as well. And here are three important things to consider when you are adapting recipes. Does your air fryer run hot or maybe a little cool? Because all air fryers are made from different companies, they come in different shapes, different sizes, and different wattage. Times and temperatures are gonna vary slightly. What works for you could be slightly different than what works for me. The more you use it, you'll kind of get a feel for if your air fryer is cooking a little hotter or cooler and you'll know how to adapt and change those times. Number two, it's always best to start low and then add more time as needed. You would rather add time than start too high and you've totally ruined your meal. And once you've kind of figured out if your air fryer cooks a little hotter or cooler, you'll have a better feel for how much to reduce that cooking time. Number three, do you need a little more crispiness on your food? Simply crank up the heat the last few minutes of air frying. And because oil is a heat conductor, just adding a little light mist at the end will really help intensify that heat and crisp things up. And lastly, what foods should you not even bother to cook in your air fryer? Grains, rice, pasta, they simply need to be cooked in boiling water. And the air fryer just does not bring water to a boil in an efficient amount of time. 
sauces. Similar to boiling water, it'll just turn out better if you put it in a saucepan on the stove where you can stir it frequently so things don't burn. And last, wet batter. Think of things like a funnel cake or the wet batter on a corn dog. They just do a lot better being immediately dipped into some hot oil. So instead, do things with a dry coat and mist a little oil on it to help the dry seasonings adhere to the food. Now that you've learned you can cook so much more in your air fryer than just a bag of frozen french fries, you are ready to open the door into air fryer accessories. Having the right tools in your kitchen will really enhance what you can do with your air fryer. You're about to learn which accessories are must-haves, which ones are nice to have, and which ones I just don't think you need to waste money on. I guarantee you have some of these things already in your home, and I also have a piece of advice that just might surprise you. First, I'm sharing my top seven must-have accessories. But before we start, I have one tip for you. Measure the interior dimensions of your air fryer basket. When you find something you think will work in your air fryer, you'll know instantly if it will actually fit inside of it. I'm using my Kasori 5.8 quart air fryer as I show you all of these accessories. The dimensions of that basket is nine by nine with a three and three quarter inch height. So just keep that in mind as I show you these 17 accessories. Number one, an instant read meat thermometer. When you're following a recipe, the actual cooking time could vary a little bit because all air fryers are slightly different. Using an instant read thermometer takes the guesswork out of your cooking with the air fryer because you'll know exactly when the meats and baked goods are done. I have a free download where I've listed out all of the internal temperatures for all the different meats and all the different types of baked goods. Plus I have 15 air fryer tips on that exact same download that you can just hang on your fridge for an easy point of reference and reminders to everybody in the home who's using the air fryer. So just click on that link below and I will email that to you right away. The pros to having an instant read thermometer, it can be used for so many other things besides just what you're cooking in your air fryer. The cons, I can't even think of one. It's such a great tool to have in the kitchen. Number two, silicone spatulas and tongs and turners. You probably already have things like this in your kitchen. Since the majority of air fryers have that non-stick coating inside, you want to only use accessories that are not gonna scratch or damage that coating. Coating. Silicone is an excellent choice because it's heat resistant up to 600 degrees and it won't scratch the coating or melt. Pros to having these, it's versatile and can be used every day in your kitchen, not just for your air fryer. The only cons I've found so far is sometimes these silicone tongs can get a little bit slippery when I'm using them to pull dishes out of the air fryer. Number three, a spray bottle. You probably saw me talking about this in my air fryer 101 video or my top 12 air fryer mistakes video. As a quick recap, you just don't want to use any aerosol spray inside of your air fryer. Instead, get a bottle and buy some high quality oil that's healthy and has a higher smoke point. I've been using this Evo brand of oil sprayer for a while and I just recently purchased some other sprayers and misters to test them out and see if I like them better. The pros of the oil spray, it's replaced the aerosol cans in our home and it's a healthier option for cooking and we can use it in so many other ways. The cons, there is an upfront cost. Over the long run, it does save money and sometimes when I spray, it shoots into a stream instead of a mist. That's why I'm testing out these other sprays. I will link to those as well below. Number four, a heat resistant surface. Even if you have granite countertops, I would protect your investment and use something in between your air fryer and your countertops just to protect it. I just use this wood cutting board because I can use it for other things as well. And it looks cute in the kitchen. Pros, it looks cute in my kitchen and has lots of uses. Cons, some cutting boards are super expensive, but you can definitely find some affordable ones too. Number five, Heavy duty foil. There are two great ways to use foil in your air fryer. When I'm baking, I like to cover up the breads and cakes to keep them from burning because they're so close to that heating element. You can also use foil to make a sling. It's great for lifting things out of the air fryer. But there are a few warnings with foil. Make sure you leave enough room for airflow, so don't spread foil all the way across the bottom of the basket. You need that air to flow so the food can cook properly. And of course, you do need to be careful as you lay it down and move it in the air fryer because after time, it could start damaging the coating in your air fryer. And lastly, make sure you secure the foil. If you have it down, make sure you have enough food holding it down. Or if you have it covering food, make sure you secure it tightly to the dish. The fan inside of the air fryer is powerful and could lift the foil up into the heating element and that would cause a lot of problems. The pros to using foil in your air fryer, you likely already have some in your kitchen. The cons, if you're not careful, it could start wearing down the non-stick coating inside of your air fryer. Number six, oven safe pans or dishes. Using an oven safe dish, 
opens the doors to baking. Things like pies, casseroles, cakes, quiche, even bread. A few things to keep in mind when you're looking for dishes for your air fryer. First of all, obviously it needs to fit in the air fryer, not only width-wise, but height-wise. You'll see this was made for the air fryer. It has a little handle and it's easy to pull in and out of the air fryer. But you can also use cake pans, anything that's oven safe. I even use my nice Pyrex glass. You just wanna make sure you have a nice high quality glass so it doesn't shatter or anything in your air fryer. As long as it's oven safe and fits inside your air fryer without restricting flow, you can use it. The pros, I already have these in my kitchen. The cons are sometimes it's challenging to remove these right from the air fryer unless it has a handle. Number seven, a microfiber cloth. No, this does not go inside of your air fryer. A wet microfiber cloth and some Dawn dish soap work wonders with your air fryer basket. You never wanna use anything abrasive that's gonna scratch or harm the coating. Microfiber is nice and soft and does a good job of getting those layers of grease and oil off the sides of the basket. It's also great for wiping down the exterior and the interior. Pros, I can use this daily in my kitchen. Cons, none. Okay, those are the seven must-have accessories. Now I have eight more that are nice to have but not needed, and I'm gonna show you different ways to use them. Number eight, silicone molds and cups. Now you definitely don't need these, but I really do enjoy using them for things like meatloaf bites or brownie bites or pancake bites, little egg omelet cups and cupcakes and muffins. Any of these will work in these cute little silicone molds or the silicone cupcake liners. The pros, they can be used in your Instant Pot as well, plus they add some fun interest to your foods that you're cooking. The cons, I have found with the silicone bites pans that usually the center mold doesn't cook as thoroughly as the outer circles. Number nine, these silicone oven mitts. Now you can use a hot pad or a towel to lift hot things out of the air fryer. But I do like these silicone mitts because they're thinner so it's easier to get your fingers in between the air fryer and the pan that you're pulling out. I actually got these with an Instant Pot set that I bought a couple years ago, but you can also find these on Amazon and some air fryer accessory kits include these. Pros, they can be used for so much more than just the air fryer. I also like using them for holding my Instant Pot and stirring. The cons to this, like I mentioned, some are poor quality. I also don't recommend using them for holding something hot for a super long time. Number 10, air fryer skewers and rack. Every air fryer accessory kit that I see on Amazon includes this rack. Not only is this a fun way to make kebabs in your air fryer, the rack itself can add another layer of cooking space to your air fryer. There's a one and a half inch rise here, and on the other side, there's a one inch rise. So with this one and a half inch rise, you could cook some kebabs and then maybe some more veggies underneath it, or how about some fries on the bottom and fish sticks on top, or maybe even a hamburger patty or two with some fries on top. Do you have this accessory? I'm curious to know how you're using it. Just be aware that the more food you have in your air fryer, the more airflow restriction there could be. So it might cook a little unevenly. You also might need to rotate the food so the things on the top don't block the foods on the bottom. The items on the top will also cook faster because they're closer to the burner. Pros, it could add more cooking surface to your air fryer. Cons, it's not really useful anywhere else in my kitchen and is a little bit bulky to store. Number 11, ramekins. They are the these cute little ceramic dishes that fit perfectly inside of an air fryer. They make cute little cakes or cookie cups. I've used them for baking eggs and I've even used them to make cute little individual sized bread loaves. Pros, they have lots of great uses in my kitchen plus my air fryer. Cons, sometimes they're a little bit more challenging to clean and they could be a little challenging to get out of the air fryer at times. Number 12, the pizza pan. You'll find this one in a lot of air fryer accessory kits. Fits very nicely into the air fryer and it can be used of course for making pizza pizza or a pizzuki, fried eggs, pancakes, and just about anything that you need to contain. You could likely also find a shallow cake pan or dish and use it in your air fryer for the exact same purpose. Pros, it contains the food and it has a nice non-stick coating to make cleanup a breeze. Cons, I can't really think of any other ways to use this outside of the air fryer. Number 13, a mandolin slicer. This is great to have to prepare the food that you're going to cook in your air fryer. You can perfectly slice foods like potatoes or sweet potatoes or apples, anything that you wanna roast in your air fryer so it cooks nice and evenly. The pros to having this is that there's so many other ways to use it in your kitchen. The cons, not really any, but you could also just use a knife and eyeball it and try your best at slicing fairly evenly. You may already have something like this in your kitchen. And this is nice for brushing oil on your food that you wanna be more careful about evenly coating. I also like to use it for brushing the inside of my pans, but you could also use a paper towel for that or even your fingers. Pros, there's multiple uses for this in your kitchen. Cons, none. Number 15, 
parchment paper. Air fryer parchment paper is a heat resistant paper that has little holes in it so it doesn't constrict the airflow and foods can cook nicely and evenly in your air fryer. You can also buy some parchment paper and punch holes in it if you really want to, but I personally don't think it's really worth the time. I probably only pull out parchment paper a fraction of the time that I'm using the air fryer. I like to use it if I've got something really messy or if I'm using like shredded cheese that will likely fall out. It just makes cleanup a little bit easier and that's really the only reason for it. If you do use this, you do need to make sure you have enough food weighing it down. You can see her the other day, my little girl, we just warmed up a sandwich for her and set it right down in the middle of the parchment paper and the edges of the paper blew up into the heating element and started to burn. So <laughs> just be careful with the parchment paper. Make sure you have enough food weighing it down so it doesn't fly around. The pros, it can make cleanup a little easier in the air fryer. Cons, it's just an added expense that you maybe don't need to invest in. Lastly, I've got three air fryer accessories that you really don't need. Unfortunately, they do come in a lot of air fryer kits. Now this one I debated about. It's the little grabber dilly. It feels a little mm, not quite secure. If there's not enough room in the air fryer, you can't even get this around the edges. It does work decent for this pot, but again, if you have a towel or oven mitts, they'll work just fine to pull these out. Next, the bread rack. This is also included in a lot of air fryer kits, and I just haven't found a lot of use for it. You could put some bread in it, but it puts the top of the bread really close to the heating element, so it kind of cooks unevenly. The only other thing I've seen cooked in this is like frozen hash browns, but I wouldn't put them in every single slot because there's not enough room for air circulation. So maybe if you fill them every other slot, that would be okay. But I have yet to find a great, wonderful use for this. If you have found one, let me know. Otherwise, it really is just taking up space in my kitchen. And then you've got the metal holder. They call it a metal holder. This is also in a lot of air fryer assembly accessory kits, and I don't quite see the point of it. If you cook on top of this, you lose a lot of surface space in your air fryer basket. You could use it to set a pot on top of, but I don't see the point in that. Let me know if there's a great reason for it. There's not much of a rise, so you can't really use it as a layering rack. Pros, I don't even know. Cons, it seems like a pointless thing in my kitchen. I told you at the beginning that I had some surprising advice for you. Well, here it is. If you're just getting into an air fryer, do not spend a bunch of money into air fryer accessories. I would for sure have those top seven items in your kitchen, most especially the meat thermometer and the oil sprayer. But as a new air fryer user, take some time to figure out how your air fryer works. Experiment with it, get to know it, start using it. And then once you're comfortable with it, make a list of the recipes you'd like to try and then see if there's any accessories that you need to buy in order to make those recipes happen. Earlier in the video, you learned a few things about how to clean your air fryer when you very first get it, and a few different things that you can do to get rid of that lingering, stinky factory smell. And I also shared how easy it is to clean your air fryer each time after you use it. And that easy maintenance cleaning is the best thing you can do to avoid a nasty nightmare of a deep cleaning session. Be sure to check your user guide to see if your air fryer is dishwasher safe. My Kasori air fryers are, but I never wash them in the dishwasher because they take up a lot of room and it's just so easy to clean them out in the sink. Do note that you'll never wanna use harsh, abrasive cleaners, chemicals, or scrubbers on your air fryer basket. Those will just remove the non-stick coating from the basket and we don't want that. On a fairly regular basis, I do wipe down the exterior and interior of my air fryer unit. I have found a clean, damp microfiber cloth works great for this. And one of the best tips I've ever had a viewer give me is to use a wet paper towel or cloth and wipe down the heating element and the area all around there. After every cooking session, just wait until the unit cools down first. And of course, always unplug your unit before you clean it. Just wait until you see what it looks like under the hood of my air fryer. After I did my initial deep cleaning, I never wanted it to get to that point again. And depending on how often you're using your air fryer, consider deep cleaning monthly or at least every quarter. My Kasori air fryer, it's a breeze to clean. Even when I find an unexpected surprise left by one of my teenage boys. Here's a pro tip. Before you turn the preheat button when you're about to start a cooking session, always open the air fryer and make sure there's nothing in it and that it's clean. I've learned from experience on that one. Question, what if I'm getting a smelly odor from my air fryer? Answer, if you've been using it a lot for cooking but you haven't really been cleaning it, you're likely smelling grease and food splatters that are up in that heating element. 
that's a really good indicator that it's time to deep clean your air fryer. Roll up your sleeves and give yourself about 30 minutes. You'll need some good cleaner, an old toothbrush, a microfiber cloth, and maybe even a scouring pad. I can't promise you that it'll ever look new again, but it will look and smell much better. First, a confession. I'm embarrassed to admit that I've had my Philips air fryer for nearly 11 months and have never deep cleaned it. <gasps> You're gonna get some real life footage here, y'all. In fact, I'm almost embarrassed to show you because it's so gross. Learn from my mistake, do not wait forever before you deep clean your air fryer. By contrast, my four month old Kasori is in much better shape as you can see, and it was so much easier to clean for more reasons than one. First, you're gonna soak the basket and the pan in hot soapy water. It goes without saying, but I'm just gonna say it. Never immerse your entire air fryer in water. We're gonna let this soak and we're gonna dive into the inside of the air fryer. Again, always unplug your air fryer. Make sure it's completely cooled down before you start cleaning the inside. If you're in a hurry to have it cool down, pull the basket out. It'll help it cool down a little bit faster. And then after cleaning, make sure your air fryer is nice and dry before you plug it back in and use it. I tend to let mine sit overnight and dry completely just for a little peace of mind. As I clean, I'm gonna show you a few different of the cleaners that I use plus the results. And I'm curious to know what you like to use when you do your deep cleaning session, be sure to let me know down in the comments. It's easiest just to turn the air fryer upside down for easy access to the heating element and all that area around it. This is the grossest part of your air fryer and of this deep clean. This is my Kasori and you can see what came off when I just wipe it down with hot water and a microfiber cloth. You can see I pulled off a lot of the buildup on the insides of the unit too. You'll see here how much buildup there is and you don't even realize it. Next, I tested out my favorite home homemade deep cleaner. It's one part baking soda, one part Blue Dawn, and two parts hydrogen peroxide or vinegar if you don't have the hydrogen peroxide. And this is the point where I pull out the old toothbrush and I just start scrubbing all around the heating element. Now it's okay to use an abrasive on the metal here because there is no nonstick coating. And then you can see on the other half, I wanted to test out the Dawn Power Wash Spray Cleaner. I'm gonna let both of these sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna move back to deep cleaning my air fryer basket and pan. Just remember the more cleaning agent that you use, the more rinsing off you need to do. If you have any residual soapy smell, just give your air fryer a few dry runs to cook that off. So first I'm just cleaning my basket like I usually do. To go a little deeper in the cleaning, use some little cotton swabs to clean in between every little grate in the basket. Of course your air fryer basket will look a little bit different than mine, so just use anything that will help you get in any little crevices. You'll be surprised at how much food and gunk you find there. I mean honestly, look at all the cotton swabs I used. Oh, it's so gross. Then I grabbed my microfiber cloth and cleaned each little grate a little bit more with some pressure and elbow grease. and I I use my Blue Dawn decreasing dish soap here as well. By the time you're done with this, your basket should feel a lot smoother and cleaner, and the majority of that grease buildup, if not all of it, should be gone by now. And depending on the air fryer model you have, this is a great time to check all the screws that connect the handle to the basket and the pan to the cover. Just give it a little scan and tighten any loose screws with a screwdriver. It's easy peasy. Now that it's had time to rest, we've gotta get back to that heating element mess. So just to test out and see how things worked, I grabbed a wet paper towel and just wiped down each side of the heating element. You can see that the Dawn Power Wash removed just a little bit more of the buildup than my homemade cleaning solution. Then I pulled out my microfiber cloth and toothbrush and continued scrubbing for about five minutes. I just wanna make sure I got as much buildup off as I could. And then I decided it was time to pull out the big guns. Here came my stainless steel scouring pad. Just a warning, wear some rubber gloves. That thing just tore up my nails and my fingers. But you know what? The scouring pad was just the final scrub down that my air fryer needed. And check out my nasty Philips air fryer. This was about 10 times worse than my Kasori. And of course it took a lot longer. I sprayed down that Dawn power wash and let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I scrubbed with that scouring pad for quite some time. The Philips was unique that it captured all the water. So I used paper towels to soak up excess water. And I knew my cleaning efforts were working because the Philips put off a terrible smell as I was cleaning it. In the Philips, the components were more difficult to clean around. That possibly is because I had gone 11 months without cleaning, but also just because of the way it was built. So basically the Kasori just got one more point on the leaderboard for my favorite air fryer. Yay! 
I used a toothbrush and a cloth to get down under the heating element. And if I had one of those thinner scouring pads, I think it would have been great to have to get down in those nooks and crannies, but I didn't. I finally decided that the interior was clean enough when I wiped it down with a damp paper towel and didn't see any more residue. At this point, my basket was clean, under my air fryer was clean, the sides were clean, and then I just wiped it down on the exterior and be sure to check the fan vents. Again, depending on your model, I found all the little cracks and crevices and used a cotton swab to get in there and find any little food remnants and things that were disrupting the airflow of the vents. Then I let it sit overnight to dry before we used it again. So what's next? Now that you've got your masters in air frying, it's time to make something amazing. I do have my recipe book available at yummyairfryerrecipes.com and right here, I'll show you four of the easiest and yummiest recipes to make in your air fryer. And I got a lot of other ideas right here too. I am proud of you for making it this far. Great job. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.